One of the interesting questions, why is alcohol, why has it been so successful in dominating the drug intoxication market? And the answer is complex. It's partly religious. You go back to the Bible. Wedding, the wedding at Cana, what did Jesus do? He turned water into wine. So alcohol has been part of at least sort of Christianity, Abrahamic religions for thousands of years. Go back to the Middle Ages. What did the monasteries do? They brewed beer or they made wine and eventually they started distilling spirits. So, so the whole religious establishment has been built on alcohol as, as a sort of profit-making uh, product. And then, of course, you've got to remember that it was only 150 years ago that it became safe to drink water in most parts of the world. Up to that point, water was contaminated with feces or animal manure, etc. In those conditions, what people drank was beer. So for a thousand years in Britain, from the Saxon times to about 1850, people drank what was called small beer. It was a weak beer, two to three percent beer, but it was safe because the yeast in the beer had killed off the nasty bugs. So people had associated alcohol with safety as well as pleasure. So it kind of dominated the whole drinks market for, for several thousand years. So why do we consider alcohol not to be a drug, it's a drink, uh, and other drugs are drugs? And that's because the drinks industry has been extremely clever. Over the last 150 years, it has eliminated all competition. If you go back to the 1850s, 1860s, you could go into your local shops in Britain, in Germany, and you could buy tincture of cocaine, of heroin, of cannabis, and alcohol. You could buy all those things to treat problems like toothache or sleep problems, etc. But if the drinks industry has managed to eventually eliminate all the opposition. So now the only intoxicant that you're illegally allowed to get in most countries is alcohol. And of course they've achieved that goal by saying those are bad drugs, but alcohol is a safe drink. There are a number of reasons why governments don't want to interfere with the alcohol industry. I mean, one of them is historic. It's been around for thousands of years. It's part of Western culture. The second is it brings in a lot of income. It brings in a lot of taxation, creates a lot of jobs. But when you look at the net losses to society through the harms of alcohol, they more than outweigh the benefits. So a drug like alcohol can relax you, make you more sociable. A lot of young people drink because they're anxious meeting other people. Alcohol relaxes them. In fact, a lot of people who drink on the, well, what's the first thing you do when the plane takes off and they get rid of the seatbelt sign? They serve alcohol because so many people are anxious flying that alcohol calms them. So alcohol has a number of effects, particularly to reduce anxiety. But other drugs have different effects. So drugs like cocaine, uh, stimulants, they can help people focus. Quite a lot of people use stimulants because they've got ADHD, attention deficit disorder, and the stimulants help them function better in the world. And then you've got people who are actually interested in understanding their mind, and drugs like psychedelics do that. They're very powerful ways of helping people make more sense of themselves and their past and their futures, etc. So people take drugs for different reasons. Uh, and uh, from my perspective, that's actually what humans do. We shouldn't be censoring the use of some drugs and celebrating or subsidizing the use of drugs like alcohol. We should be helping people minimize the harms of any drugs they use. So I've had obviously quite a lot of dialogue with the alcohol industry, but they're very, very clever. So for instance, you say to them, we need to have minimum pricing of alcohol. You shouldn't sell alcohol below a certain price per mill of alcohol. One of the problems we have in Britain is that alcohol is being sold in supermarkets at less than the price of water. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So we were arguing strongly, you have to increase the price of alcohol to be the same price or more than water in supermarkets. And that will be a price, perhaps, say, of, of 50, 50 cents, 50 pence per uh, eight mils of alcohol. And they come back and they say, well, there's no evidence that would work. And you think, well, there's no evidence it would work because it's never been tried. But there's a lot of evidence that pricing affects drinking. That is why we tax spirits more than we tax beer. <laughs> because we want to reduce the consumption. We don't want people to drink 
litres of spirit, so we tax it so they can't afford to. So there's massive evidence that pricing controls drinking, but they always come back with the specific. Well, we've never tried minimum pricing. And then we try minimum pricing. It's been tried. You say, oh, but, it, but it worked in Saskatchewan, in Canada. Why won't it work here? Well, they're different. You haven't proved it's going to work here. Well, how can we prove it works here until we try it? And they fight and they fight. One of the most remarkable examples of the defensive strategy of the drinks industry is what has been happening in Scotland over the last 10 years. So Scotland has three times higher levels of alcohol damage than in England. And the Scottish government was really determined to do something about it. So it brought in a law for minimum pricing of alcohol. Getting them, you couldn't sell more than eight mils of alcohol had to be priced at at least 50 pence. The drinks industry fought the Scottish government. They fought them through the Scottish courts. They fought them through the European courts. They lost, they lost. They came back, they fought them through the Supreme Court in Britain. They lost. Now, it's now law. But it took seven years for the Scottish government to enact this policy because the drinks industry did not want it. But what's even more paradoxical and not well known is that the drinks industry will make more money out of minimum pricing. But they just wanted not to give in. They want to control the debate. They don't want to be told what to do, even though they would make more money out of minimum pricing because the price of alcohol goes up. They just don't want to concede at all on their control of the political debate. My view on drugs is very clear. From our scale of harms, we know which drugs are less harmful to the user than alcohol. My view is that those drugs should be available in a controlled fashion, for instance, in a pharmacy where drugs are sold. I think drugs which are more harmful to the user than alcohol, we should keep illegal because I want to encourage people to use less and less harmful drugs. And we should encourage research to find safer alternatives. We could almost certainly find safer alternatives Two drugs like MDMA. It's pretty safe anyway, but we could probably find safer alternatives. But we won't do that if every time we come up with a new drug, it's made illegal.